What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome back to the HQ. As always, it's your boy Nicholas, big dogs gotta eat, BDGE, fantasy football, whether you're joining us from YouTube or the podcast. Welcome, Bike. It's in the muck Monday, which means tackling two controversial players. Maybe they're in the same backfield, maybe they're in the same wide receiver grouping, or their ADPs just happen to be similar. That's what we're doing today. We're doing two rookie running backs. Now, I know there's gonna be a lot of discussion around different rookie running backs, and people people's rankings I've seen very, very scattered all over the place, right? Some rookies ranked as like their number two running back. Other people might have the same running back ranked like number eight. Today, I'm doing Royce Freeman versus Ronald Jones. Rojo versus Rolls Royce Freeman. The reason I'm doing them too, because their ADPs are almost identical. Royce Freeman is going off the board currently at pick 57 overall, running back 27. Ronald Jones is pick 56, running back 26. So one pick apart, one running back rank. This is what the people are saying, the community is saying. And in my opinion, they are two guys that I think need to be compared and should be picked around the exact same spot. So it's gonna be a good breakdown today. Let me know what other comparisons you guys wanna see. Drop a comment down below and I'll be sure to kind of get around to it one of these Mondays. Guys, before we get started today, in light of, uh, this, is, this is a serious point I want to make here. In light of Anthony Bourdain's suicide and, you know, 13 Reasons Why, season two coming out. By the way, that bathroom scene at the end was the most fucked up thing I've ever seen. They really didn't need to put that shit in the season two. For any of you guys suffering from whatever it is, anxiety, depression, you don't feel good about life right now. I just want to let you know... My DMs are open. My email is listed down below in the description. If you ever need to talk, I'm a good listener. I'm here to listen. I know I just spew out shit all day, but I'm also good at taking things in. So if any of y'all are feeling under the weather, you're not feeling too good, that's never the answer. Please feel free to reach out to me, guys. I will, I'll hop on a call with you if we need to. It doesn't matter. I just want to throw that in there before we start the video because a lot of that going around. But on a more upbeat note, it's Monday, so I hope you guys are starting your week off right. If you're, if you're joining me, then, then you're starting your week off right. I want to get into the numbers right now, and we're going to look at their college numbers just off the bat so you guys can get an idea of what their production was like in college. Royce Freeman, a four-year player at Oregon, and Ronald Jones, a three-year player at USC. Both very prolific producers. Royce Freeman in a class of his own in terms of yards, yards from scrimmage, touchdowns, all that stuff. But we'll we'll get more into that later in the uh, video. I just wanted you guys to kind of have a feel for what we're working with here if you're not accustomed to who these running backs are. So start off with Ronald Jones, picked by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, second round, pick 38 overall, the running back from USC. Again, ADP, 56 overall, running back 26. Now, when we look at the, the situation, he gets picked by the Bucs, right? Second round, so heavy draft capital. He, he slides pretty much right into that starting role. I'm not denying that. But I'm not sure how much that really means from a fantasy perspective because we look at the, uh, the, the situation where, there, right? He does slide into the top of the depth chart, and we look behind him, and at first glance, you're like, they don't really have anything, right? It's Peyton Barber, it's Charles Sims, it's like maybe Quiz Rogers, I think it's still on the roster, but really nothing that stands out to you, nothing like, whoa, he's going to actually have to battle for, for these carries. So for the most part, people uh, assume that Jones sliding into the Buccaneers' backfield was like an ideal situation, like perfect. I would argue the contrary. While they did need a starting running back, right, and they think they have their guy in Jones, I would say Ronald Jones' weakness, his weaknesses in his running game, just as a running back overall, are complemented really heavily by the other two backs on the roster in Charles Sims and Peyton Barber, right? You look at Ronald Jones uh, in terms of his size and what he can do on the field, and he's an absolutely electric player, right? His burst is incredible. He's one of those guys that can cut really quick and then hit the hole as long as the holes are there. You look at Peyton Barber. Peyton Barber impressed last year. He's just 24 years old, and his size is what really concerns me for Rojo's sake. 5'11", 205 pounds. Not big for a guy that you're expecting to handle a really big workload. So when you look at Peyton Barber, just 24 years old, his weight is kind of what concerns me, first of all. He's tipping the scales at 225 couple plates on the bench press there, right? As compared to Ronald Jones's 205. We already know from example that the Bucks are plenty fine riding Barber. I think down the stretch, it was final five games of the year, Barber averaged over 18 touches a game for the final five games of the Bucks season in 2017. He showed ability near the goal line. He showed ability as a receiving back, right? Charles Sims was hurt for a majority of the year, but when he came back, 
Barber actually outcaught Charles Sims 12 to 9 down the stretch in that same five game span. Listen to this. So Barber is barely used over the first half of the season, right? He still wound up with eight carries inside the five yard line last year. So eight goal line carries pretty much, which tied for 12th amongst all running backs in the NFL. So barely used the first half of the year still heavily utilized by the end zone and the, and the goal line, right? So we're talking about goal line carries, and that's where I'm a little nervous for Ronald Jones, right? Their offense should be pretty good. It definitely improved from last year because of injuries and, and other things, but I'm not sure he gets those opportunities, Ronald Jones, outside of breaking away big plays, because like I said, Peyton Barber's got 20 pounds on him. They used him heavily down by the goal line last year, and he played pretty well doing so. The other part of the uh, of Ronald Jones's weakness is I see third down. You look at pass blocking, you look at receiving, and you look at this goal line work. So I think Peyton Barber is going to get a good amount of the goal line work. Now, what happens in the receiving and the third down game? Rojo is a guy who, he's a willing blocker, right? He, he showed signs at USC that he can block and he's perfectly fine staying in there and taking the hits, but he also misses a lot of blocks. Per Graham Barfield's yards created column, which I, which I cite heavily on this in terms of running backs, he is the worst graded out running back ever in terms of pass blocking from the yards created column. So that's a three year span. Over the last three years, the running backs that, that Graham Barfield has graded, Ronald Jones is the worst graded pass blocking back. And then you look at his receiving skills. Now, I'm not personally anointing Charles Sims like the Le'Veon Bell of, of this year or anything like that. Because people were, I was never one of those people that were really high on Sims and be like, oh, he's like an elite top five, top three pass catcher in the NFL. But there's no doubt that he was, he's very good at that part of the game. At worst, he's a better pass catcher than Ronald Jones. Now, don't confuse what I'm saying here. I'm not saying Ronald Jones is not a capable pass catcher. I'm sure he is. Any NFL running back not named Jordan Howard probably has good hands and can catch footballs. It's really not that difficult. But the problem is making the assumption, like just because you watching this video, you think Ronald Jones is capable of catching the ball does not mean the Bucks are going to use him as their pass catching back. And I've made that mistake plenty of times. I go into the year a lot. This is one of the big mistakes I'm taking into 2018 is just because I like a back and I think they're athletic and they're good all around running backs does not mean that their team is going to utilize him that way, i.e. Amir Abdullah, which we'll get into later. Jones played 40 career games at USC. He caught 32 career passes. That's 0.8 passes per game that he caught. So take that as you want it, man. It might tell you that they just didn't want to overuse him because they used him a lot in the run game, or it might just say that he's not that good in the passing game. But there's no way that you should look at that and say he was barely used at USC and flip that into, nope, he's good. He, he's the pass catcher here, no doubt in my mind. Like That is some, a mistake that I see a lot of fantasy people make is the assumption that just because they like a running back means that they're automatically going to get that pass catching role. And they have Charles Sims there already. So I think you just need to be realistic about the situation. And I think his outlook kind of dims when you look at that. And the other thing that scares me about Jones, right? If you watch him, yes, he look he looks unbelievably expo uh, explosive at times. And like he sees a hole and he hits it, right? He does, like I see the Jamal Charles comparisons when he hits that hole, like I understand why people make that comparison. However, he's not a guy that can power through defenders. And at 205 pounds, a lot of people are like, yeah, he finishes his runs and blah, blah, blah. But dude, he's not doing that against He's not a guy who puts his head down and runs defenders over. Yeah, he might fight for the extra one or two yards, but at 205 pounds, you're not running guys over. And guys who aren't capable of taking those big blows and taking the hits and running guys over and are not at least elite speed or something like that and are elite in the passing game, which is where Jamal Charles separates himself wildly from Ronald Jones, then there's a good chance you're not gonna be able to handle a huge workload. So the style I see from Ronald Jones is this, right? He's not super powerful. He's not running guys over. He's also not great in space. Like his yards created in terms of like making guys miss and elusiveness isn't great. His one cut ability is what really explodes on the scene, right? His acceleration and that style of play is, is what made him great at USC. So he's going to need holes. And that's where the the Tampa Bay Buccaneers offensive line kind of comes into play. They are not a good run blocking line. In fact, they were really bad last year. So according to playerprofiler.com, they were the 27th ranked offensive line in terms of run blocking efficiency. According to PFF, they were also 27th ranked in terms of average yards before contact for a running back. So Jones isn't a guy that will be an animal in fantasy football unless he's getting those holes that he can accelerate through and burst through. So I'm not saying he can't do that because he can, that's his play, but he needs holes. He needs those openings for him to be able to do that. And the Bucks line does not look like a team that's going to be able to do that for him. I'm just really afraid that, you know, he's going to be the next Amir Abdullah, a guy who you absolutely fall in love with. Me 
speaking personally, you love the burst, the acceleration. Him and Abdullah are kind of the same size and they don't give a beating to defenders, so it's hard to give them a huge workload. And you look at uh, Amir Abdullah, he ran behind an awful offensive line at the start of his career and Ronald Jones looks like he's going into a situation where the line is not going to be good whatsoever. At best, it's going to be average. Even if you're going to say, you know, here's another problem that I see fantasy football people make with and mistake wise. It's still like they always are like best case scenario when it comes to offensive lines. They're like, oh, it was really bad last year, but they should improve this year because of blah, blah, blah or whatever. At, at best, you're looking at like an average line. And I don't think it's going to be that good. So just like Amir Abdullah, Rojo has guys on the depth chart that fill in the gaps in his weaknesses. So Amir Abdullah, had goal linebacks there that took away. They didn't even have goal linebacks. They would just use guys because they didn't want to use Amir Abdullah. And then they had the pass catching back, Theo Riddick, Charles Sims. Goal line back in Detroit, you have Peyton Barber in Tampa Bay. So I'm afraid that like people are getting excited about Rojo, who is a player who should get a lot of early down carries, but not much else. Maybe he's a little bit utilized in the passing game. I could see that. It's going to be an okay, a mediocre offense, maybe a little bit above average, maybe with a bad offensive line. And I get it. You absolutely love the guy in college. And it's probably, for a lot of you guys, it's going to be nearly impossible to talk you out of him. If you're one of those guys that loved him on tape, you're probably not going to be able to uh, be talked out of your position. I, and I get that. And there's certainly positives, like the fact that they got him at pick 38 overall, like that's heavy draft capital. And who knows, maybe they do give him the goal line work. Maybe they do get him more involved in the passing game. But I think that the bigger point here, the bigger picture is be realistic and don't fall in love with his game film. So this is per the Tampa Bay Times' is Greg Allman. He expects Peyton Barber and second round rookie Ronald Jones to initially share the load in the Bucks' backfield. Also regarding the second round draft capital, Russell Clay, a guy I follow on Twitter, which I suggest you guys follow, he tweeted out this nugget the other day. Since 2000, 42 running backs have been drafted in the second round of the NFL draft. Average year one of those running backs. 151 touches, 690 yards from scrimmage, under four touchdowns. Obviously, those are averages. You could beat that out. You could go lower than that. But Rojo's just not a guy I'm willing to take a risk on, especially if he's going to be sharing the, the early down work. Like that really kills his value because you don't know if he's getting the goal line work. You don't know how involved he's going to be in the passing game. So Rojo's a guy, like I said, I'm going to be a lot less happy drafting than Royce, than uh, not Royce Freeman, but maybe Royce Freeman. We'll see at the end of this video than most people. So we get to Royce Freeman after Ronald Jones. Before we get to Royce Freeman, actually, I want to give a shout out to our sponsors, fantasyjocks.com. They are the industry leader in fantasy sports equipment for your league. I'm talking about draft boards that you stick up on your wall and do live drafts with your boys or girls for any of you that are ladies out there. Belts, rings. They also have trophies, which I need to actually get one so I could show you guys what they look like. They are awesome. I'm telling you, these are really, really, really high quality stuff. This is the one I use for my big money league. You can see you can get your team's names engraved year over year so you know who won the chip, who brought it home. The rings are inexpensive, but they're really high quality. Like you can knock somebody out with this shit. I might wear this around for the rest of the night, to be honest with you. Get your league mates to chip in, eight, 10, 12 bucks or something. Decide on a prize, whether it's, they have awesome Lombardi trophies, like I said, rings, belts, chip in an extra 10 bucks and you guys can afford something for your league. It makes it that much better when you're playing for something. I'm telling you, it's a good time. So fantasyjocks.com, check them out. Thank you for sponsoring today's video. I also want to plug my draft guide. Uh, the pre-order is available until July 1st. The prices will go up on my website, bigdogsfantasy.com. The draft guide uh, is looking pretty dope. I'm going to put a little teaser right here. So it's got all of that included plus more. It's gonna be super, super, super awesome. So get it at the pre-order price on the website right now. It will be linked below. Price will go up July 1st. I'm looking, I cannot actually wait to give that to you guys because it's so much value. But let's move back to, to my boy Royce. Roycey, Roycey Freeman. So where I stand on these two running backs, Rojo is the more talented back. Royce Freeman, in my humble ass opinion, is in a better situation with more opportunity. So you look at Denver, you got JC, CJ. 
Jamal Charles, CJ Anderson, both gone. That opens up a massive hole in that backfield. I don't think people are aware just how massive the hole was. The Broncos ran the second most offensive plays in the NFL last year among all NFL teams, which is crazy considering their record that they would have that much time on the field as an offense. They ran the second most plays. Them two gone, CJ and JC, opens up 314 carries, 62 targets. So 376 RB opportunities. Let that number sink in, 376. That's not counting what Devontae Booker already had last year. I was shocked when I saw that number. Uh, you know, I couldn't believe it. With Devontae Booker still there and he had 110 touches last year, there's just so much work available in this backfield. What I would say, a little caveat there, is you have to expect regression there in terms of the total number of plays because there's no way a team with that record can have that many plays, right? It's the other teams are like the Jaguars, the, the Eagles, the Patriots, the winning teams that have that many plays. Even with their record, right, being 5-11, and 11, obviously trailing a lot, they were still the 12th heaviest passing team in the NFL. So that tells you that they're going to be throwing the ball more and they're probably going to gonna have less running back opportunities. And that was with the shit show at quarterback. And now they have Case Keenum, so they're gonna be looking to throw the ball definitely more. And I think all around, probably less opportunity, but still a massive hole there. That being said though, there's there's not much competition in the backfield beyond Royce Freeman. It's Devontae Booker, that's it. Straight from Elway's mouth. He's a great addition to the backfield, bell cow type. First and second down, he's a guy we needed. We needed a thumper. Royce Freeman went round three pick 71 overall. Round three, pick 71 overall. Royce Freeman is, was a four-year player out of Oregon. He racked up over 6,400 career yards from scrimmage, along with 64 career touchdowns. So a prolific, absolutely prolific uh, producer in college. He never had a season with lower than 1,100 total yards and 10 touchdowns. So four straight years, that is really impressive. He's built like a bull. Six foot, 230 pounds. Like Elway said though, he's a thumper, but he's also got great straight line speed, 4.54 40 yard dash, which puts him in the 86th percentile for weight adjusted speed score. So he's really big. He's a ball that can run really fast straight. However, he is not so much a guy that creates on his own, in my opinion, from what I've seen from the tape and also Graham Barfield's opinion on yards created and some other stats I've seen along the interwebs. He doesn't really make guys miss. So he's got two good things working for him in terms of the speed and the size, but it's kind of the same issue that we see with Rojo. When you have a guy that has that speed, that break, he can break it away, right? At any point, he's got the home run ability is one of his biggest assets. So just like Rojo, Freeman's going to need holds. And again, that Denver offensive line is not good. They ranked ninth worst in the NFL per pro football for focus, focus in terms of yards before contact for running backs. And nothing really suggests that offensive line will be better in 2018. They didn't make any big changes or moves or trades or free agent signings or anything like that. So overall, Freeman is a good all around back. He's not great at anything, but he is pretty good all around. I think he's going to have some trouble making guys miss and creating missed tackles in Denver behind that kind of shitty offensive line, but I think the overall volume there that's open is going to be such a big asset for Freeman. So conclusion, overall, when it comes down to it, I'm gonna take Freeman here, and that's based on the opportunity, right? They both have question marks, in my opinion, but in that case, when you have guys going similar spots, both of them have question marks, I would say Freeman has just as much upside as Rojo does, but with more opportunity available. So his floor is higher in my opinion. I think they're both pretty much set to get around the same amount of carries. And overall, Freeman has a better chance to be the goal line back given his, his size and be just as involved involved in the passing game. So I think if you're taking Rojo here, I think it's because you're in love with his film at USC. You're banking you're bank, banking on a few big breakout runs, which of course are very possible given the style of play but it can turn into an absolute nightmare on a week to week basis. Uh, while I think Freeman gives you a, a, a solid floor just based on his volume. Rojo's a guy that's gonna be, he could be hard to start in redraft because what if he gets like 13 carries and two catches a game, gives you 70 yards total or something like that. You can't bank on him getting more than like six touchdowns on the year realistically. So uh, that's why I like Freeman more. But for what it's worth, I found some Vegas odds. The prop bet was the rookie to have the most rushing yards in 2018. Saquon Barkley is the favorite at minus 110. Rashad Penny is the second favorite, plus 150. And Sony Michelle comes in at three, my boy plus 325, so he's a little bit of an underdog there, but that's the order for Vegas has as the most rushing yards for rookie, Barkley, Penny, Michelle. And uh, that's gonna wrap up the video for today. So that's the In The Muck. If you enjoyed, please hit that thumbs up. If you're on the podcast, please subscribe to the podcast. Leave a five-star rating, please, so other people can find your boy. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you are new. We're gonna be coming at you with videos like this all summer. Don't forget to drop who you wanna see in the next In The Muck monday that's it pre-order the draft guide subscribe do all that kind of whatever 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 i'm gonna enjoy the rest of the